If you are pregnant or you've recently had a baby, this podcast is for you. I am your host, Kath Bequee, a physiotherapist working in women's health and mum of three. Join me each week as we dive into all things pregnancy care, childbirth and postnatal recovery, helping you have a wonderful pregnancy and afterbirth experience. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Well, hello there. It's great to have you here for another episode of the Fitness Mama podcast. I am super excited to chat about this topic today. So today's solo episode is all about the the really common question, when should I start doing pelvic floor exercises during pregnancy? It's a really common question. It's one that I get asked a lot via DMs on Instagram And it's also a topic that I hope my members are really confident with. So around 50% of the lovely women who join Fitness Mama do so because they are concerned about their pelvic floor or they're wanting to do everything they can possible during this really important phase of pregnancy and motherhood. So in today's episode, we're going to discuss four main things. We're going to discuss what are the pelvic floor, why they're so important, when should I be doing them, so when during pregnancy or when after birth should we start and how often, and then we're also going to discuss how to do the pelvic floor. And do stick around because it's related to this because I do have an exciting announcement which I hope is going to make your life and your to-do list, or you know, the brain drain that we all have, that little bit easier. So it's a super exciting announcement. So do stick around. I'll let you know at the end of this episode. Before we dive into this all-important question, when should I start doing pelvic floor exercises during pregnancy? I do just want to invite you to come and join us inside Fitness Mama. Reclaiming your pelvic floor core and strength safely is the most effective way to care for your body confidently during and after pregnancy, and all of this is available with Fitness Mama. If you have found you're not exercising as much as you'd like to during pregnancy, perhaps you're busy or you've lost motivation, or you're not quite sure how to be looking after your body, perhaps you've got pelvic girdle pain, abdominal muscle separation, or you're just not sure about the best exercises for you, or you'd like to be getting back into running after birth and you want the best Kickstarter possible, then Fitness Mama is for you. So join us for these convenient, short, easy workouts that you can do from the comfort of your home whilst your baba sleeps, your toddler runs around or at the end of a long day at work. Head to fitnessmama.com and the link is in the show notes. Right, let's get into this episode. Okay, ladies, what is the pelvic floor? We're starting off with what, then we're going to discuss why we need to do them, when we need to start doing them, and how to do them. So I'm going to make this super short and as succinct as possible. What are the pelvic floor muscles? To put it simply, your pelvic floor muscles are the muscles that are at the floor of your pelvis, the base of your pelvis. They wrap around all the openings. So your urethra where the wee comes out, the vagina, and then the anus at the back. They help to close off the openings and they help to support your organs. They're those muscles at the base or the floor of the pelvis, hence the name pelvic floor. They are internal to the body. And This is why sometimes it can be hard to know if you're doing your exercises correctly. It's not like you're doing a bicep curl at the gym. We can't see if you're doing your pelvic floor exercises. They're your own little secret. So that is what they are essentially. Why do we need to know about them? Why do we need to know about our pelvic floor? Because unfortunately, the statistics, according to the Continents Foundation of Australia, one in two women will have some type of prolapse after giving birth, and one in three women will experience incontinence at some stage. 
So these stats are real. One in two of us or one in three of us are experiencing these issues. So they're responsible for leaking. So that's leaking of urine, but also feces and also the wind. So being able to hold in wind, urine, feces voluntarily. And they're responsible for helping to support the organs. So safeguarding us against pelvic organ prolapse. And that might be felt as a vaginal bulge, a vaginal lump, that pelvic heaviness sensation or pelvic dragging sensation. Sometimes it might be as subtle as not feeling like you're emptying your bladder properly, or it might be felt like a tampon is stuck inside your vagina. So there there are a variety of pelvic organ prolapse symptoms, and they're just a few of them. Pelvic floor muscles also help us with our bowel habits. So if we've got constipation, that's a bit of a warning sign. Chronic constipation, maybe there might be a pelvic floor element in it and it needs to be investigated. If you've got sexual pain, so pain with sexual, uh, with the intercourse, that's a bit of a warning sign. Again, perhaps maybe your pelvic floor is implicated and that might be worth assessing. Or perhaps you've had chronic pelvic pain, so whether or not it's endometriosis, interstitial cystitis, like there's a lot of chronic pain syndromes or reasons why we might have long-term pain around the pelvis, and that might also be a bit of a warning sign that perhaps you might want to get your pelvic floor assessed. So ladies, if you do want to have access to a free pelvic health checklist, I do have one available. I'll put the link in the show notes, but it's at fitnessmama.com forward slash checklist. So that's a pelvic health checklist. Super quick, super easy. Yes, no questions. If you answer yes to any of those questions, I do highly recommend you get assessed. So go and see a pelvic floor physio who can do an internal assessment if that's appropriate for you or talk talk you through the options available for you. Right. We talked about what, we talked about why, let's talk about when to do the pelvic floor exercises. So there's a, I believe there's a Chinese proverb. I heard it from someone else. I haven't actually read it, but I believe there's a proverb that goes something along the lines of the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago. And the second best time to plant a tree is now. Same thing with the pelvic floor. This is something I wish all adolescent children learned about. So girls who are reaching puberty, And boys, you know, basic anatomy of our pelvis, where are all the openings? What is a pelvic floor? And, you know, even how do we do a wee properly? How do we do do a poo properly? Those basic functions of the pelvis. I I really do think that basic education would really help set up that awareness so that people can identify earlier on if there there are issues because I'm a huge believer of prevention over cure or if there are issues then nipping them in the bud and getting onto them sooner rather than later. So we're talking about when to start. So pelvic floor exercises for particularly for women. Women we do we are disseparate from the ma- our male counterparts. Our pelvis is wider. There's a larger surface area. So when we're pregnant and postnatal, like naturally our pelvis is wider to make way for the baby. And because of that, that's one reason why our pelvic floor is sometimes put under an extra bit of load compared to our male counterparts who have a narrow pelvis. It's like having a really big trampoline, a really wide trampoline versus a small trampoline. You're going to get more up and down movement in the wider or the bigger trampoline. The second reason why women are more at risk of these issues, uh, we do have hormonal changes that occur with pregnancy, postpartum and menopause. And then of course there's action of giving birth. So whether or not you have vaginal birth or a cesarean birth, like even with a cesarean birth, you've had nine months of baby and all the fluid and everything that comes with pregnancy sitting on top of that pelvic floor muscle. So they are under load. So If you haven't started doing pelvic floor exercises pre-pregnancy, I really do think pregnancy is a great time to start. They are really gentle. 
They, they should never be painful or uncomfortable. It's your own little secret. They're, there's something that you can be doing during your first, second or third trimester. Now, I, I do just want to say a little bit of a, a disclaimer. If you do have any medical concerns to do, if you're a bit unsure, please do touch base with your medical provider and you doctor if you've got any questions at all about whether or not this is appropriate for you. But generally speaking, if you have an uncomplicated pregnancy, you can start at any stage during pregnancy. So we're talking about when, but but this is the topic we're talking about here. So when should we start doing pelvic floor exercises? And the answer is now, if you haven't already. But the, I do just also want to And this is going into the next section, which is how do I do it? Because it's all well and good to start, like we don't want to start suddenly doing a million pelvic floor exercises just because we're suddenly pregnant. We we do want to make sure we're doing the exercises correctly with the right technique. We want to make sure we're involving beautiful strength, like lifts as well as relaxation. Just as any muscle is in the body, it needs to be able to be nice and strong and it also needs to relax. I think a nice way to think about this are your neck and shoulder muscles. Imagine if you had a chronic headache, a, you know, headache one day. You probably find you're hitching your shoulders up towards your ears a little bit. So you have these muscles around your neck and shoulder are probably active And they probably need to relax a little bit more. Because if we are activating muscles for a long period of time, we might develop pain issues. So it is super important. Research has found that pelvic floor strengthening can help with recovery outcomes. So reducing our risk of prolapse, incontinence, those post-birth recovery. And I am keeping an eye on research because it does keep developing every day. But I also want to say it's important that actual childbirth aspect, if you're having a vaginal birth, that ability to relax your pelvic floor is equally important. So the reason I'm telling you this is it's not a time to start doing a million exercises all at once. We want to make sure we're doing them properly. So how often? It's a little bit individual. I would love it if gold standard, if you can, if you're able to go get a pelvic floor assessment, you'll be able to get an individualized plan. For some women, we really want to have a bit of a burst of rehab, so uh, pelvic floor training. So I encourage three times a day, not a week. But for other women, it might be once a day or once every second day. So every prescription is different. Now, I know not everyone wants to go and have a vaginal pelvic floor assessment. I know not every woman is able to. Perhaps you live regionally or rurally or there's no pelvic floor physios close to you. I know I know that not everyone just wants to. So gold standard, I'd say if you can, go have a pelvic floor assessment. But if you can't, there are other resources. And I, I will just say that Fitness Number does have a whole module on pelvic floor exercises. So what they are, how to do them, and we go through a pelvic floor program. And every single workout finishes with pelvic floor exercises and all those beautiful different elements of pelvic floor exercises. The second thing I do just want to say is if you feel there's two ways to have a pelvic floor assessment, and I'm talking about Australia at the moment, generally you can go to the public health system or private. So the public system, if you've got any concerns that I talked about earlier, so if you are concerned about leaking or prolapse, go and have a chat to your GP and they might, they will see if you're eligible or appropriate for a referral to your local continence clinic at your local hospital that has a continence clinic. The, the thing is with those continence clinics is sometimes there's a really long wait list. And especially if you're not top priority, sometimes you're on a wait list for a good eight months. So the other options privately, and that's when you can book in with your local pelvic floor physio. You don't need a referral. You can just go and have an appointment with them. They can discuss you through your options in terms of the different ways of assessing your pelvic floor and talk you through from there. 
But I do just want to say, even if you think you're doing your pelvic floor exercises, there has been some research to show, I think it was 20% of women who think they're doing their pelvic floor exercises properly are actually not. So that's just something to bear in mind. That's why I do think gold standard, every woman, to get that baseline awareness of where they're at and how make sure they're doing it properly. So we have covered what the pelvic floor muscles are, why we need to do them, uh, when we need to start, and going into the how to do a pelvic floor, I'm going to leave you hanging because starting on Friday, every Friday, we're going to have a Friday floor session. This is going to be super quick three-minute podcast episode, five-minute podcast. I don't actually know how long it will be. I haven't recorded it yet, but I am talking you through pelvic floor exercises. I'm going to take you through different elements of pelvic floor exercises. So every week will be a different set of pelvic floor exercises. Some weeks we might do more endurance holds, others we might do more relaxation. Some weeks it might be more about the quick lifts, other weeks it might be combined. Like we're, It's just going to be, the reason I'm doing this is because every time I get onto my Instagram page and talk through stories with the fitness, with the pelvic floor exercises, there's always people messaging me saying, thank you so much. I needed that reminder because I do, <laughs> I do totally admit pelvic floor exercises are boring they're, and they're hard to remember to do. They're hard to prioritize. They're always something on the to-do list. So I hope by having a weekly podcast episode that pops onto your phone. So if you're not following me on the podcast app, so whether or not it's follow or subscribe, do so because then you'll get access to the latest episode. And I just hope that it, this will help remind you, but also make it a bit more easy. I'm going to talk you through it. We can all do it together. And then that's one thing ticked off your to-do list that you might choose to repeat a few times. So you might listen to that for a couple of days until the next podcast episode comes out. So I hope that will be helpful. Starting this Friday, starting... So if you're listening to this at the time that it's released, we're starting June. And we're going to just trial it every Friday. So it's going to be a second podcast episode every Friday, just a very short public floor podcast episode. So I'm super excited Send me a message on Instagram at Fitness Mama. Let me know, is this something that you're excited about or is it just me and I'm going to be the only one doing it? <laughs> so that's it, ladies. Hopefully that episode was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do always appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out to listen to this podcast and I look forward to you joining me next week or on Friday, I should say for our first ever Friday Floor Session. Catch you soon. Thanks for listening to the Fitness Mama podcast brought to you by the Fitness Mama freebies found at www.fitnessmama.com forward slash free. So please take a few seconds to leave a review, subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to take a screenshot of this podcast, upload it to your social media and tag me at Fitness Mama so I can give you a shout out too. Until next time, remember an active pregnancy, confident childbirth and strong postnatal recovery is something that you deserve. Remember our disclaimer, materials and contents in this podcast are intended as general information only and shouldn't substitute any medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. I'll see you soon.